ADATA XPG V2 memory kits are optimized for the latest Intel gaming platforms. Check the link in the video description for more details. Welcome to my performance overview, I guess you could call it a review of sorts, of AMD's Richland series of APUs. Now we only got one of them. We got the A10 6800K. And so we kind of went, okay, so this is gonna be priced at around 145 bucks or so, uh, sort of in bulk pricing. So let's compare that against the obvious competition, which is of course a sea turtle. Well, no, but it felt that way a little bit because AMD's Richland is really in a class of its own when it comes to a low cost value gaming platform. So, <clears throat> AMD sort of released this Richland series of APUs. They're on the same FM2 socket as the older APUs, so you don't have to really upgrade your hardware. You can just get um, a BIOS update for your board or whatever else, and you can basically drop in a Richland. Also, AMD has told me that we are going to be looking at FM2 for the next generation of APUs as well. So they haven't really changed the platform. In fact, they haven't really changed the architecture at all. So it's mostly just a small speed bump over the last generation 5000 series, like the 5800K APU. So why did they do this? My guess is it probably has something to do with the release of Haswell. So we took the lowest cost Haswell as well we could find and took a few mainstream games that you might want to play on a system that doesn't have a dedicated graphics card and we ran them head to head. Now with that in mind, we didn't do any compute performance benchmarking because we already know the Intel chip is going to wipe the floor with the AMD one. We're talking about a very specific usage case here that is not focused on CPU. So if you want better CPU performance, go with a Haswell. If you want better GPU performance, well, stay tuned. Because in Skyrim, our 4430, which is an i5-4430, Intel doesn't have an i3 yet, they're launching only the higher end of their Haswell CPUs, got beat by our 58, or rather 6800K, by a whopping 10 frames per second. 24 frames per second average on Richland versus 15. Now with that said, the 5800K, the last gen one, was only one FPS behind this one. So you can really see it's a small clock bump and not really anything revolutionary in terms of performance. Our next game up was Dirt 3, and in this one, Richland outperformed Intel's solution by about 75%. That is fantastic, all the way from 22 FPS or so to 37 FPS going for a different platform. Bearing in mind this one costs about $30 less than the Intel solution. Finally, in StarCraft II, which is a very sort of mainstreamy type title, Richland wins by about 25% versus the Haswell GPU, and we see it once again very close to the 5800K. So was this the most exhaustive test of benchmarks that we could have possibly run? No. Was this pretty much all you need to know about Richland? I would say yes. AMD's delivered a new chip that goes on their existing platform that you don't need a new board for. They've delivered outstanding graphics performance in a CPU or APU or whatever the heck you wanna call it, which really isn't any different from what they did last time, but that's fine, because what they did last time was great too. I've done a fair number of videos about their last generation APU and it's awesome. And so I think that pretty much wraps it up. If you want to do entry level gaming and you don't want to buy a graphics card, buy an APU. Thanks for checking out this episode of Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.